Hi friends, welcome back to another ukulele tutorial. Today we're looking at the song Vincent, Starry Starry Night. This song is both tragic and beautiful. I want to give a shout out to all of my patrons who voted for this song on the latest song poll on my Patreon page. I have really enjoyed putting together this tutorial and I'm excited to share it with you. This lesson is for all levels. So for beginning level, we're going to look at how to play through the entire song using an easy strumming pattern. Then we'll look at how to play through the song using three beautiful finger picking patterns. We'll use one pattern on the verses, one pattern on the chorus, and one pattern on the bridge. We'll also look at various ways that you can end the song, including a beautiful finger style option. At the end of the tutorial, I hope you'll join me for a play along where I'll play through the entire song demonstrating all of the patterns and you can play along with me. Throughout this lesson, you'll find the lyrics, chords, and patterns on screen. If you'd like to download them as a PDF, you can do so from my Patreon page along with my songbook that has all of the songs that I've shared in my tutorials. You'll find the link down below in the video description. You may have noticed that I have my capo on the second fret of my instrument. Now if you're not familiar with capos, here's a great example of when to use one. I want to play this song using chords that are in the key of G, because they lend themselves really well to beautiful chord transitions that fit this song. However, if I play the song in the key of G, I can't quite hit the low notes when I sing it, so the beginning of the verses start off really low, and I can't quite hit those notes. So by putting my capo on the second fret, this changes the key from G to A. So I can hit those low notes when I'm singing, and I can still play my chord fingerings in the key of G. I'm going to have my capo on the second fret throughout this lesson. If you don't have a capo, or if you don't want to use one, that's okay. You can follow the whole lesson playing and singing in the key of G. I want to point out as well that I'm playing a tenor with a low G. If you have a high G on your instrument, you can follow this whole lesson. Just keep in mind that some of the patterns, particularly the finger picking patterns, will sound a bit different on your instrument because your fourth string is one octave higher than mine. Now let's take a look at how to play the chords in this song. If you're already familiar with these chords, then skip ahead to the next section. Now I'm going to play through all of these chords with my capo on the second fret, since I'm using my capo throughout this lesson. So I'm pretending that my capo is the nut of the instrument, just moved up two frets. So I'm going to use standard chord fingerings in the key of G, but having my capo right here allows me to sing the song in the key of A. For example, our C chord will be the third fret of the first string. If you're going to play this song in the key of G without a capo, then you'll play the third fret from the nut rather than the third fret from the capo. Now let's take a look at our G chord. To play G, I have my middle and index fingers on the second fret of strings one and three, and my ring finger on the third fret of the second string. Next we have G sus four. To go from G to G sus4, we're going to place our pinky down on the 3rd fret of the 1st string, keeping our G chord fingering in place. So going from G to G sus4 and back to G. This is a beautiful transition that we'll use many times throughout the song. Next we have A minor. I'm playing A minor with my index finger on the 2nd fret of the 4th string. From A minor, we go to A minor add 9. Here we're adding the ninth note in the A minor scale, which is a B note. I'm doing this by placing my middle finger on the 2nd fret of the 1st string. In this song, we'll go back and forth between A minor and A minor add 9. To do this, we place down our middle finger and then lift it back up. Next we have our C chord, 3rd fret of the 1st string, 
Then we have D7. For D7, I have my middle and index fingers on the second fret of strings two and four. Then we go to E minor. To play E minor, I have my index finger on the second fret of the first string, my middle finger on the third fret of the second string, and my ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string. Next we have A minor 7, which is all open strings, and then A7, which is the first fret of the third string, and then we go to C minor 6. This is a beautiful chord, and I'm using my index finger on the second fret of the fourth string, and then my pinky, ring, and middle fingers on the third fret of strings 1, 2, and 3. Now we have just two more chords to go. The next chord is F7. I'm playing this chord by starting with a standard F chord, using my index finger on the first fret of the second string, and my middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Then I'm placing down my ring finger on the third fret of the third string, and my pinky on the third fret of the first string. And finally, our last chord is E7. I'm playing E7 with my index finger on the first fret of the fourth string, and my middle and ring fingers on the second fret of strings three and one. Now we'll look at how to play this song using an easy strumming pattern. Starry, starry night. Let's take a close look at this pattern and how to apply it to the song. This first pattern is made up of two down strums on beats one and three. One, two, three, four. I'm playing these down strums as arpeggios or broken chords. So rather than a traditional down strum where we play all strings at once, the arpeggio is played more slowly and gives a sweeter sound. Applying this pattern to verse one, we're going to play our first pattern over the word night on our G chord. So our first down strum is going to be on G. And then our second down strum in this pattern will be on G sus four. So we'll place down our pinky for the second down strum. And then our next pattern will be back on G for two down strums. The second down strum here carries us into the second line. Our next pattern starts on our A minor chord. We're going to split this pattern between A minor and A minor add nine. So one down strum on A minor, and then one down strum on A minor add nine, and then we'll go back to A minor for one full pattern, which brings us into the beginning of line three. Then we go to our C chord for one full pattern. And then in line four, we go to our D7 chord. And we end line four with half of the pattern, just one down strum on our G chord. This gives us a nice musical pause to start singing the lyrics on line five. Lines five, six, and seven of the verses are played the same way as lines one, two, and three, using the exact same chord progression. When we get to line eight of the verses, we're going to our D7 chord for one full pattern, and then we're going to our G chord over the word land at the end of line eight. We'll play our first down strum on G, our second down strum on C, and then we're going back to G for just one down strum, or half of our pattern, to finish the verse. Now I'll play through verse one, adding in the lyrics. Starry, starry night. Paint your 
palette blue and gray. Look out on a summer's day with eyes that know the darkness in my soul. Shadows on the hills Sketch the trees and the daffodils Catch the breeze and the winter chills In colors on the snowy linen land For the chorus Every chord in lines one through four is held for four beats, so we'll play our full pattern, two down strums, on every chord in lines one through four. When we get to line five of the chorus, our A minor seven and D seven chords are held for only two beats each, so we'll play one down strum on A minor seven, and then one down strum on D seven. When we get to our G chord at the end of line five, this chord is held for six beats. So we're going to play three down strums or one and a half patterns. So the count on our G chord is one, two, three, four, one, two. Now I'll sing through the chorus into the first line of verse two. Now I understand What you tried to say to me How you suffered for your sanity How you tried to set them free They would not listen They did not know how Starry, starry night. Every verse in this song is played the same way as the first verse, using the same chord progression. And every chorus is played the same way as the first chorus. So now that we've looked at the first verse and the first chorus, we know how to play most of the song. The one section that we haven't covered yet is the bridge. The bridge uses a different chord progression and takes on a different melody. This is the most dramatic part of the song. So let's take a look at how to apply our strumming pattern to the bridge. For the first two lines of the bridge, every chord is held for four beats. So we'll play our full pattern, two down strums, on every chord in lines one and two. When we get to line three, we're going to start slowing down the tempo. We're going to our G chord and we'll split our first pattern between G and F7. So one down strum on G, and then we go to F7, and then one more down strum on E7. And here we have a slight pause before we resume on our A minor 7 chord for two down strums. In line 4 we go to our C chord, then to D7, and then we go to our G chord at the end of line 4. Here we'll play one down strum on G, one down strum on G sus 4, and one final down strum, or one half of a pattern, on G to end the bridge. Now we have a slight musical pause before we start our final verse. Now I'll play through the bridge, starting with our final line of the second chorus through the first line of verse 3. Perhaps the listen now. They could not love you, but still your love was true. And when no hope was left in sight, on the 
that starry, starry night You took your life as lovers often do But I could have told you, Vincent This world was never meant for one as beautiful as you Starry, starry night Now we'll look at how to finger pick this song, starting with our first finger picking pattern that we'll apply to the verses. Let's take a close look at this one. Here's our second pattern played slowly on a G chord. I'm starting with my thumb on the fourth string, index finger on the third string, then I'm playing strings one and two together with my middle and ring fingers, and then going back to the third string with my index finger. Then I'm repeating that sequence. So the rhythm of this pattern is one and two and three and four and. We'll apply this full pattern to chords that are held for four beats, or we may split the pattern between chords that are held for only two beats each. Bringing this pattern up to the tempo of this song will sound like this. Applying this second pattern to our verses will be similar to how we applied our first pattern. Starting on our G chord, we're going to split this pattern between G and G sus4. Then we'll go back to G for one full pattern that carries over into the second line. Then we go to our A minor chord and we're going to split this pattern between A minor and A minor add 9. Then we go back to our A minor chord for one full pattern. In line three, after our A minor chord, we go to C. And then in line four, we go to D7 for one full pattern. And we finish line four on our G chord. And here I'm going to play an abbreviated version of this pattern the phrase. So just our fourth string, third string, and then one and two together. We'll apply this pattern to lines five, six, and seven of the verses the same way as lines one, two, and three, as they use the same chord progression. When we get to line eight of the verses, we're going to our D7 chord and we'll play our full pattern on D7. And then at the end of line eight, we're going to our G chord. We're going to split our pattern between G and C as each of these chords is held for two beats each. And then when we get to our final G chord at the end of line eight, we're going to play our abbreviated pattern the same way we did at the end of line four. This gives us a nice musical pause before we move into the next phrase. Now I'll play through the second verse using our second pattern, adding in the lyrics. Starry, starry night Flaming flowers that brightly Our second finger picking pattern that we'll apply 
to each chorus. Let's look at this one up close. Here's our third pattern played slowly on all open strings. I'm starting by playing strings four and one together with my thumb and middle finger. Then I'm playing string three with my thumb, string two with my index finger, going back to string four with my thumb, then down to string one with my middle finger, string three with my thumb, and finishing on string two with my index finger. The rhythm of this pattern is one, This pattern up to the tempo of this song sounds like this. We're going to apply this third pattern to the chorus of this song, and we saw with our first pattern that every chord in lines one through four of the chorus is held for four beats. So similar to our first strumming pattern, we'll apply our third pattern one time to every chord in the first four lines. As an example, starting on our A minor chord on the first line, and then going to D7, and then we'll go to G. When we get to line five of the chorus, our A minor seven and D7 chords are held for only two beats each. So we're going to go back to our first pattern here, doing a down strum on each of these chords. So first on A minor seven, and then on D seven. On our G chord at the end of the chorus, we're going to play our third pattern followed by a down strum. This chord is held for a total of six beats. So the count here is one, Play through the chorus using this third pattern, adding in the lyrics. Now I understand what you tried to say to me, how you suffered for your sanity, how you tried to set them free. They would not listen, they did not. And now our final finger picking pattern that we'll apply to the bridge. Let's take a close look. Here's our final pattern played slowly on all open strings. strings four down to one with my thumb, index finger, middle finger, and ring finger. Then I'm going back to string three with my index finger and finishing on string two with my middle finger. The rhythm of this pattern is one this pattern up to the tempo of this song will sound like this. We're going to apply this pattern to the bridge of this song, and we saw with pattern one that for the first two lines of the bridge, every chord is held for four beats. So we'll apply this pattern one time to each chord in the first two lines. Starting on A minor seven, going to D7 and then to G. In line two, we'll go to our E minor chord, then to A minor seven, 
and then to C minor 6. When we get to line 3, our first three chords are held for only two beats each. So we're going to go back to pattern 1 here. We're going to do a down strum on G, then a down strum on F7, and then one more down strum on E7, where we've slowed down the tempo. And now going to our A minor 7 chord, at the end of line 3, we'll go back to our fourth pattern. Moving into line 4, we'll go to our C chord, and then to D7. Now our last three chords of this line are held for two beats each, so we're going to go back to pattern one. We'll play one down strum on G, one down strum on G sus4, and one more down strum on G. Now here's how it looks to play through the bridge and add in the lyrics. For they could not love you, but still your love was true. And when no hope was left in sight, on that starry, starry night, you took your life as lovers often do. But I could have told you, Vincent, this world was never done with our tutorial. In this next section, I'll give you some options on how to finish the song. On our final chorus, for line 5, if we're playing our first pattern, our strumming pattern, then we're going to do a down strum on A minor 7, and then a down strum on D7, and then we'll do one final down strum on G. If we're playing our third pattern for the chorus, then we're still going to do a down strum on the first two chords because they're held for only two beats each. So A minor 7, and then D7, and then for our G chord, we'll go to our third pattern. We can end right there on the pattern, or we can do one final down strum. And now my favorite way to end this song is a finger style option after playing the third pattern. To play this finger style option, I have my index finger on the second fret of the fourth string and my ring finger on the third fret of the second string. I'm going to start with an arpeggio through the second string. Then I'm going to lift up my ring finger and place down my middle finger to pick the second fret. Then lift up my middle finger to play the open second string. Then I'm moving to the third string and placing my middle finger on the second fret then lifting my middle finger up, keeping my index finger down this whole time, and now I'm going to play another arpeggio through the second string, placing my middle finger back down on the second fret of the second string, then my ring finger on the third fret, then I'm playing the open first string, and now we're going to a beautiful G5 chord. I have my index finger on the second fret of the third string, my ring finger on the third fret of the second string, and my pinky on the fifth fret of the first string. If this is too much of a stretch for you, then you can simply end on a G chord. Here's how it sounds to end the song with this finger style option starting with the final line of the chorus. Perhaps they never will If you're enjoying this
this lesson, please give this video a like and thank you for subscribing. Now we're moving into our play along. I'm going to play through the entire song instrumental only so you can hear how I move back and forth between the different patterns. The lyrics and chords will be on screen so you can play along with me and if you'd like you can also sing the lyrics. I'll count us in on eight beats. If you're singing along, then you're going to start singing on beat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
beautiful ways to play Vincent. Have fun practicing and thanks for watching. They did not know how. Perhaps they'll listen.